Hello, everyone. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Callum. How are you doing today? Yeah, all right. Busy. <laughs> How about you? Dennis, what, what about you, Dennis? Are you, are you busy? How's your week? Silent, uh, pa um, uh, patient, and of course, not interrupted with any failovers week or maybe the other side of the, <laughs> the river? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty good. Uh, I just... Um... I recently switched uh, job, um, so yep. I'm I'm in my second week at Norse, so I'm very much the new guy. So my schedule is very very empty. It's like one meeting a day and no emails. So it's like complete difference from what I was used to. Are you still, <laughs> still doing Umbraco or are you doing other things? Yeah, mostly on the uh, side projects, uh, but yeah, it's more e-commerce focused now. Yeah. That's interesting. And of course, congrats on the, on the new job. We, I, I saw it on, 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 on LinkedIn or other medias. Uh, and yeah, we are glad to have you here. Uh, and, and finally, to also have an, a full episode title, uh, as Adolfi Appreciation Time. Uh, so that's, I said that's, that's this morning saying, I don't know what to call this week's episode. <laughs> Mark was like, well, it has to be, has to be Adolfi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and of course, Dennis, you did a, a great, a, a lot of amazing stuff, which we had, what we highlighted during the Umbra Coffee episodes, and, and it's amazing to have you uh, joining us today. Uh, we have uh, plenty of news to discuss, and we have uh, plenty of people joining us uh, already live, uh, and uh, and yeah, thanks uh, even from United States and other countries. So we're glad that you are here with us, and let's kick off. Uh, let's kick off, and let's discuss what happened uh, in the Umbra Coffee community uh, this week. Uh, and uh, let's start from another social event. Uh, that we didn't mention too much about uh, last Friday. <laughs> I don't know if it's by accident or or, uh, or or we completely forgot, but of course, called Kami happened. And Callum, you've been attending this year's Code Kami, so there. I feel like you will be the best to, to describe what happened, how it was. Yeah, and, it, it, and it was very good. I mean, just scrolling down this feed, you can see yeah. all the pictures that we had some amazing weather, amazing food, really good chats. Um, not so much coding or hacking as, as in previous years, but uh, no, still very good. Lots of games, lots of fun. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great weekend. Obviously, I'm sure they'll do another one next year. Apply if if it sounds or looks interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it was a very very enriching experience. Yeah. And a little bit different than others, right? So that's that's exactly what we what we what we've been discussing all the time. And mm -hmm. of course, we will be reminding us and everyone else to to supply to, uh, apply for for the, another uh, year of Code Cabin. But I saw a lot of great tweets, a lot of great summaries, and it it felt almost like a code garden to be honest it was like uh, people going to code cabin being yeah. there and highlighting the, the activities there and then summarizing the, the whole weekend and it, it's amazing to see that a lot of people a lot of new people as well there and uh, uh, enjoy them and, and now probably is the time when uh, the the buzz and the, and the mm. uh, energy that was uh, uh, found there will be uh, converted into uh, some uh, output i believe right so now, now it's time for hacking. So really good. Uh, if there are some people who were attending Code Cabin, we've let got, us know. And we've got Gareth in the chat, and we've got yeah. Owen in the chat who are both there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyone else, let us know, and we'll give a shout. Yeah, we'll highlight uh, some of the comments for sure. Uh, but yeah, that was happening. And of course, there's a lot of events aligned further in time. Uh, and let's start from uh, US, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, um, when, Colin, you are flying to, to the United I'm States? flying so. tomorrow, and this, this event is in six days. It's Thursday next week <laughs> uh, for the Embraco yeah. US Summit. Of course, there is uh, there was going to be uh, some other events happening as well around that, which we'll, we'll talk yeah. about. I saw in the chat that uh, Nikhil's saying about Umbra Coffee. Yeah. What happened to Umbra Coffee next week, Martin? It's a very good question. Uh, but we've planned. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Be surprised. <laughs> Learn it. And, uh, yeah, it will be a slightly different episode next week. But, uh, yeah. And I'll in, be in London, by the way. Then <laughs> that, that will be in London. Interesting. I'll be in the, in the US, but I'll be asleep. So this is all going to be yeah. great. <laughs> uh, we, we will dial in Callum sleeping. From, from <laughs> no. But but then this is already New York awaiting for for some uh, further activities. And um, yeah. so Dennis, we, there is a meetup happening next week <laughs> around you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, we can definitely highlight the meetups. Uh, the Minneapolis one is the first one, right, on September 26th. Uh, uh, and the next one is, uh, and, and Kali, we are talking there with also Kevin, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll be talking about um, uh, the, the specific uh, case study with Ambraco. There is a new hackathon prior to the um, event, which you mentioned, Ambraco uh, Summit. 
and uh, last week, this week, do, do you have to come for the whole day? No, of course not. Like, yeah. Yeah. come for the morning, come for the afternoon, just pop in and say hi. Like, it's not a, it's not a structured or very planned thing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And last but not least, this is the New York uh, um, yes. meetup, and also you will be doing the talk about Umbraco running anywhere. Do you want to uh, uh, tell us more about this uh, this talk? Because no, be because uh, I'm going to be doing it at quite a lot of other events too. So, uh, okay. You're going to be at, at Duke Fest, which is the the next item on our agenda. Ooh. You're going to be at the the Danish festival. Um, you'll get a chance to see oh, it. Yeah. It'll be recorded or something at some point. So no, I, I don't want to spoil too much. It's just a bit so of fun. description is everything we need to know about it, and of course the rest I, is. Fun. Yeah, I was I was sort of told by Emma, hey, do uh, do anything you want, like talk about anything you want. I was like, well, this is an opportunity <laughs> to go talk about anything I want. Uh, and uh, I came up with the crazy yeah. idea I could think of, and I've done it. Yeah, I think uh, th th that would be a really good community activity to suggest uh, some uh, things uh, to, to run and back on, as, as Carl suggested, a toaster, for example. Uh, we can see where it could go, uh, what, what is the farthest, well, uh, the I, most weird. I, I, will, I will tell you, I have Umbraco running on a fridge, in principle, on a fridge. Okay. So... Uh, okay. Yeah, you really can run it anywhere. That's great. Uh, you've mentioned uh, a, a DAP fest, um, uh, and of course, it's, it's also happening very close in time. Uh, Two weeks cause... today is, is DAP fest. <laughs> oh, um, that's, that's crazy. That time flies, right? That time mm. flies. Uh, and we didn't realize this is October already. But yeah, of course, um, we, saw, um, uh, we mentioned this event multiple times. There's a great agenda, uh, great people behind the event, a uh, great uh, place where the event is happening. And, and yeah, everyone who is going there uh, to attend in person uh, definitely will, will enjoy. Uh, and and yeah, we'll have we will have Umbra coffee and and like a proper live event Umbra coffee that you can enjoy yeah. from there. So we will have our uh, a kind of studio set up and try and get some guests from the event on, and uh, it should be really cool. Nice. Should be really cool. Yep. Uh, and last event that is. In the close time frame, it's also another Microsoft event this time. It's Microsoft Ignite with the whole and um, also uh, worldwide experience, I would say, because Ignite is the, distributing this activity across the globe. And it's happening uh, between October 12th and 14th. Uh, so, uh, and uh, again, it, as each Ignite is packed with uh, to topics, knowledge around everything Microsoft related, basically. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a lot and, of uh, the good things. Dennis, what's going on with Ignite in Sweden? I know that in a few yeah. places they, they're running little satellite events. Of course, I know that Microsoft MVPs like yourself are invited to participate. Do you know any? Do you know anything going on? No, I'm so so bad at joining these. I <laughs> I get really good invites, but I'm so uh, really bad at joining them. Uh, we have uh, yeah. Reno renovating a house and uh, children and you know life so uh, <laughs> so yeah not uh, I'm, I thought I would actually now after the summer start you know being better joining these events uh, so hopefully I will shape up yeah, but as I've mentioned to Dennis before going live, I feel this pain. <laughs> I still have boxes everywhere near, my, near, near myself. Hey, Martin, you need a bit of furniture in your new office because it's very echoey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We it's exactly that, talked about the, the same. House, right? Yeah, that the whole house. Yeah, and it's still in the making. We still don't have heating and things like that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I appreciate every uh, new thing that is coming here. And don't be surprised if there will be a painter joining this office today and trying to finish my walls because they're still unfinished. So yeah, this is a, that's exciting stuff. And I have a lot of relations to IT industry between the constructions now, and I probably will convert it into a talk on what we can learn from the builders and what builders can learn from us. But maybe, maybe for the next year, when I'll have more time to participate in the event. They, they like make it. the same excuses, right? They'll, they'll, <laughs> maybe it'll be ready next week. Oh, okay, maybe not. not, not but <laughs> I can get away with it more because... <laughs> Give any fixed prices. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I think they have more trust generally because if, if not them, no one else will fix it. And, and, and something like, you know, it's, I have a lot of relations, a lot of, a lot of thoughts, uh, and I will definitely convert it into something. It was, it was an interesting period in my life, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, I feel this excuse and, and it's a fair student, for sure. And so yeah, that's the Ignite that is happening soon. And uh, the next are releases 
uh, and we can start from a Graco deploy release um, um, that has some new, really cool um, features. And I scanned through them briefly. Uh, maybe question for you, Dennis. Dennis, did you have the chance to use Umbraco Deploy uh, at, at any phase of your project or, uh, or working with Umbraco? Uh, no, no, not yet. Okay. okay. Uh, no, unless, has unless, uh, unless uh, built in Umbraco Cloud. Um, okay. yeah. So, yeah, Cloud probably counts as well. Uh, but this has also a couple of good features that I, I, I found this time really interesting. Con transferring content with the scheduled publishing applied to that. That's, uh, that's definitely a useful feature for people who are uh, trying to prepare uh, some, some content publications, content calendars. Uh, single language uh, transfers that we've mentioned uh, and uh, persistent transfer queue. That was something that interested me the most because uh, <clears throat> previously it turned out it was a uh, full in memory cache and now it has the, the database uh, validation. Yeah, been me too. Occasions where on Umbraco Cloud I've logged in and I've seen there's still content queued up for transfer, but I assumed that it had been there yeah. age, but it clearly wouldn't have been if it's just in there. Yeah, ex exactly. I was the same surprised uh, when I read this, but it seems like uh, now it's more persistent. And of course, application restarts, we know that we can lose the state, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's more um, um, relevant these days, especially in the most distributed ecosystems. And it seems like it's now there. And of course, performance improvements and some additional changes, but yeah, generally a pretty good release. So everyone who uses or used uh, Deploy will definitely benefit from it and check it out if you haven't. Uh, yeah, another big release. Uh, there was an RC that we discussed, Callum, right? About there was an RC a couple of weeks, weeks ago. Um, I think maybe started this month. And yeah, we've got then the V3 stable. Martin, you've probably worked with this more than, than we have by this point. Yes. I know you yes, we, we, yeah, we have a we have a pleasure to work with Thunder Tree right now in, in one of our projects, and, and and yeah, I can now confirm that all of the all of the thoughts that we've been mentioning about vendor support, Matt, and general the team are, are just uh, priceless. And of course, we found some issues with upgrading between the versions. Matt uh, replied to back to us, fixed it in the in the new RC version, and yeah, right now we are on vendor 3.0. It works seamlessly. And we are right now um, uh, building features next to next to the vendor uh, to make yeah. it more headless. Uh, I, I saw you had some problems getting it running on Azure, which, yes. as Matt pointed out, is actually a is a an Umbraco issue also. And I think maybe something that people don't know too much about in uh, V10, which is the small changes that they've made to the the databases database engines, where you have to specify your type, and by default, the SQL Server type on Azure is not the type that uh, Microsoft expects it to be. There's like system.data.sql client or yes. microsoft.data.sql yes. client. Very, 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 very different products, but you wouldn't necessarily know. And uh, Umbraco will not run with one of them and neither will vendor. So, uh, yeah. and, and funnily enough, we, we, we switched it to, to the proper one on Azure and it still was picking the wrong one. So we needed mm. to completely delete the connection string, for example, to make it work and to just pick the connection string from the application directly. Uh, so if anyone struggles with the same issue, um, um, be aware that this might be the cause. And, 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 and yeah, it was, it was this connection string that it was creating issues, not the, the implementation itself. So mm. yeah, and, and yeah, uh, check it out. If, if, you, if you want e-commerce functionalities in, in, in Umbraco, but uh, yeah, I can just, I will probably will share more of the journey uh, over the time because it's, it's work in the making now for us. Mm. Um, the next one are packages uh, from um, um, Anders and, and Limbo team this time. Dennis, you've been the only person up until this point that's had a segment on Umbra Coffee. And I think <laughs> it's the Anders Bjorn is really the property editor segment yes. every week every week without fail there is one so uh, yeah we've got the youtube picker now for uh for weekend. yeah some uh, people are not sure how they find the time uh it's it's weird, you know the amount of things they produce <laughs> like ken is, like we're gonna yeah. mention more in this episode <laughs> Yeah, but this is consistent, solid uh, pace of delivering new things, and, and we've been discussing another picker last week, and this time it's a YouTube um, a picker, uh, again very well implemented, it, again beta version as well, but still uh, we, we we used to um, uh, the beta versions that are uh, um, 
reproduction ready, I would say. So go and check it out if you're aware looking or maybe using another figures from, uh, from the Limbo team and others. Uh, this one is for YouTube uh, particularly. Uh, but yeah, uh, and the next one is um, an update to um, Rapid Doctor Grid, grid Editor. Uh, a lot couple of pieces yards in there, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah exactly. And still, uh, it's a, one of the must-have packages, I would say, in, in the in the in the ecosystem. So um, definitely worth it. But the next one is really interesting, and mm -hmm. I, I I missed it, uh, but you found it, Callum. And uh, oh, Johannes. Uh, Johannes actually reached out to me. Of course, Johannes came on Umbracopy a few a few months yeah. ago, um, yeah. and this looks really cool. I believe someone, maybe Aaron Sadler, was asking for this. Does this exist? It's a, yeah. it's a full blown ticket system in the back office. Um, yes. And it looks very slick, looks exactly like uh, Umbraco. It fits in really, really nicely. And uh, yeah, no, this looks, this looks really, really good. Um, Johannes said it's been a, a project that he's kind of worked on for over a year. It's like a, a pet project, a, a bit of fun. Um, and it also supports V8, V9, and V10. So yeah. really a lot of work's gone into making that happen. I know we're, yeah. I've been want, talking about something like this since like Umbraco 6. We were talking about having some sort of a ticketing system for clients in the back office. Um, so yeah, I, I finally, which has been great. To, we'll definitely check it out. Yeah, and also Johannes mentioned here that he is currently working on EU support hub and node, uh, and uh, yeah, we could connect them sites to the to hub, uh, and it will allow us to manage all connected sites tickets. That's that's exciting. Oh, so that's well, really cool. Yeah, and it's it's like uh, mm -hmm. like really really interesting, and and, and I see a, a lot of use cases for for this, uh, especially across the solutions that we provide. Right, because you can see here on the content section, you can create a ticket from straight from here. So if it will mm -hmm. be an agency world, let's say, and a lot of clients that we are working with, then the hub would be a, able to maybe uh, orchestrate and, and help us in, in uh, uh, replying back to clients, which is this way and maybe faster for some of the cases than, than email, Slack, or whatever else is in use now, fresh text, et cetera. So yeah, really good stuff. Uh, definitely worth checking. Uh, zero downloads an hour yet, so I hope that after today's episode it will change. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, kudos to, to Johannes for, for sharing it and making it um, uh, available for us all. It would be great if we could get it uh, connected to Slack, so any ticket would come into Slack and then you can reply back to the CMS from Slack. That would be, re that would be really awesome. Um, make it, someone make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's open source, so definitely someone can make it happen. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but that, that, that would be really exciting to see this kind of extensions to, to this package. Yeah, we will see. We will see. Um, last package from our list today is a flexible links um, uh, package uh, that allows us to create a picker with some uh, various links. Uh, and I can't see exactly how it works. Yeah, the video uh, the video. Is so cool. yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> Uh, and then you zoom in and it's just too pixelated. Uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah. it's um, it's maybe structural link. So you can say, uh, yes. you pick these content links, these media links. Uh, yeah. More advanced with some anchors from them, et cetera. So that's yeah, worth installing. And maybe <clears throat> Jesse can uh, extend uh, the, the, the description or share more uh, uh, screenshots to, to tell us more about it without installing. But it looks like something new and cool. So worth checking too. And then it's time for you now. Uh, for uh, Adolfi appreciation time within the Adolfi appreciation time, I'm Amber Coffee today uh, to, to tell us more about your recent findings. And uh, of course, you, you wrote an article as well this week uh, and, uh, with performance issues in Amber 9, 10, with content models, models builder, etc. Uh, but without reading the blog post and highlighting what you've uh, said there, tell us more about your struggles and what you did and how you solved the challenge for yourself. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, first, uh, thanks for having me. I think it's uh, good to highlight this because I think it can affect a lot of a lot of Umbrakians. Uh, and should I share my screen here? Uh, maybe yes. I do something there. Yeah. So a little back, long background here, but I'm gonna thought I would actually I'm gonna discuss the, what the issue is, uh, who it affects, how to reproduce it, and how to fix it. Uh, so uh, before the summer or early this summer, a little background here. So me and the team I was working in, we got an issue with one of our production, 
one of our larger production sites that was in Umbraco 9 that started to perform very badly. And um, at first, obviously, we, we figured it must have been something we've done. Uh, so we started uh, digging and investigating our code, and we couldn't really find anything out of the normal. I don't know if you remember, but I, I raised a question on the MVP Slack, and I also raised a question on Twitter, and I got some great pointers, like, look for these things. But we didn't. none of these things really matched. So we... Uh, then all of a sudden, one of our teammates found that by replacing the passed in content model uh, in our action in the render controller, and instead use the current page object that we are also familiar with, that we always have in Umbraco, uh, performance went super fast. Uh, so just by swapping the content model to current page. And so we, uh, we thought, that's weird. Um, we haven't really touched anything regarding rendering and routing in that sense. So I did a lot of, I did a lot of digging and gathered uh, reproduction, reproducing information and uh, reprodu reproduced it on a clean install of Umbraco and saw that it was an issue in a clean install. And I created an issue in the issue tracker. Uh, this was in June. Uh, so basically, here's the examples here that if you're using a render controller with root hijacking and you're using current page, you won't see any performance issues. But if you're using, if you're passing in the content model uh, or the models builder model, uh, which I guess a lot of people do, uh, you will see a lot of uh, issues as your start site grows. And that's probably one of the important things here because you're not going to really see it on a small site or in a test or stage environment. It starts getting noticeable when your site gets really big. Um, so it's good to take, it's easy to miss and it's good to take those uh, precautions now uh, if you're using content model and models builder. Um, so here I did some, uh, some measurements on performance. Uh, so you see here is the number of nodes in the CMS. And then you're going to see later that performance is, uh, affected by the number of uh, properties you add, uh, because as, uh, Ken found, uh, if I jump to the solution, Ken Jacobson, of course, uh, found the solution. Uh, so this shouldn't be a uh, both appreciation time. It should be Ken uh, appreciation time. <laughs> uh, but now I've said that. Uh, so I did not find the solution. I'm just sharing it because uh, he uh, he gave me and a few others the solution in a uh, in the comment section of my PR. So I thought I would erase it so everyone can see it and drive tra traffic to my blog, of course. <laughs> um, but Anyway, uh, so I posted this issue. It was kind of quiet in the beginning. Of course, it was summer. But then eventually, more and more people started to join and said that they saw the same issue in their uh, site. So eventually, Ken joined and found the solution and find that this is related. It's actually not Umbraco's fault. It's, it's tied into my not my words here. I'm just uh, quoting ties into how ASP.NET Core performs uh, model validation. So the larger the object graph is and the more siblings and ancestors you have, the longer the, the validation will take. Um, and the solution is uh, to uh, replace the model validation with your, with, uh, your own, uh, so to speak, so which we're going to see an example of. Uh, so um but, but, but i have that in my blog post so if you're not interested in all the background uh story you can just click this red link and it'll take you to the these four classes that you need to add to your project and uh that's it so let's show uh how to reproduce it so what i've done is i created an empty install of umbraco uh this is uh 
10.2, and I've created three pages. Uh, I just have one page type uh, with uh, uh, no properties at all, and uh, it can be created under itself. And I created three pages, and I created three different templates that maps to three different actions in the render controller and assigned to these pages. And so we can see here that if we go to, uh, we can look at the controller. So we see that it's the same one that I, that I showed in the uh, GitHub issue. So it's basically three actions mapping to three different templates. And then they return the same view and the same view model. So we can rule out any view specific uh, performance. Um, so if we go to the current page, uh, it will be around from on my machine five, five to 15 milliseconds. And models builder is something similar at the moment because it's such a small site and the same with content model. So I created a little endpoint here to uh, fake up a lot of pages. So let's start adding uh, 50 pages to the, uh, to the CMS. Uh, so if we re reload here now, we will probably, yeah, we will have about a, yeah, 53 pages. So now if we reload, the current page will be cha not changed. You have nine milliseconds. Models builder, eight, ten. Not a really big difference at the moment. Let's see if I really, uh, uh, yeah, it's discontinued. So let's keep on adding a few pages. And sorry if I, I cannot reproduce it now. That would be. Uh, <laughs> I mean, your what, what, what was it? Was it about pages, Dennis, or about properties within the pages? It's both. both. It's it's both. Uh, related okay. to both. Uh, let's see my pages. In your, in your example, of course, you you went all the way up to seven thousand items. Yeah. No. Like... It's um, uh, it's a bit more, yeah. So let's see. Let's add a few properties here. Um. It's always these live, live <laughs> demos. Um, I guess having a little bit more pages properties will affect the object graph. Um, let's see. Yeah, now it's starting to happen things here. Uh, yeah. So as we can see now, the current page is still not changed. You have seven, eight milliseconds. Models builder is now up at 30 milliseconds. And same will be with content model. Uh, let's add, so now we should have 100 pages. Let's add another 100 and a few more properties. So we add any questions while I'm doing this is uh, welcome. Uh, just so I, I, whilst, whilst you're doing this, I think uh, one of the really interesting things about this issue is, of course, this, as has been highlighted, this isn't something on bracket controls. This isn't something yeah. that even most implementers, or maybe even core devs, actually know is there. Um, it's yeah. not something that Umbraco is uh, explicitly subscribing to, to to make this happen. So. Uh, that, that makes trying to diagnose why this is going on really, really, really weird. Um, yeah, and as Ken Ken mentioned in the in the issue tracker, is that they can't add this to as a patch to nine and ten because that would be a breaking change. So uh, Ken yes, has a made a behavioral request. breaking change because even yeah. though people don't know it's happening, it is currently happening uh, yeah. for a reason. Like it's to stop people sending infinite loops of objects through uh, yeah. the modifying them, basically, like a, to, to avoid recursion and stuff. But yeah, and, and uh, Ken has added a pull request to Umbraco 11. Uh, so this is fixed in Umbraco 11, but uh, anyone running a 9 or 10 will have this. I, it's, it's not an issue in Umbraco 8. But uh, as you can see now, now I have added more properties. And you see that current page is still not uh, any changed. 
and models builder is now up at 100 milliseconds or yeah, yeah they're 100 mm -hmm. and this will just continue this will just continue to grow so the more properties you add the higher the load time and as as we found in our client site uh, some pages <laughs> took up to 7 seconds to load uh, so which is, um and of course, we, we, we first we couldn't find the issue. We were like just throwing resources at the Azure instance and got them <laughs> down to like less than a second, but then it was already super expensive. Mm. But it's like we, we couldn't find the issue, this, any solution to it. Mm. Uh, the reality is the code change that, that's been recommended, if we could just jump back to that, is surprisingly yeah. simple, isn't it? Yeah. It's doing a and, uh, that's what I'm going to show now is that uh, you add four classes to your project. Uh, so I've added them here already. Uh, they are in the issue. Uh, you, you can find it from my blog. So all you need to do then is to activate it uh, with this line of code here. And we build a solution. And now you'll see that uh, this will be fixed. So if we <laughs> jump the initial load time here. So current page, of course, not touched. Now it's the model builder, six, nine milliseconds, nine milliseconds. So now it's fixed, you know, but this is not by default when you install in Rocco. So it's, it's a strange, I mean, I'm sure that I've not read too much of the detail on the issue, but it's an interesting one that they couldn't put this in, but hide it behind a flag or something because this is clearly yeah. affecting lots of people. I was going to say the alternative is that someone packages this <clears> up and <throat> everyone installs a package. I think it was uh, Dan here. He mentioned that maybe you could add it and then all you need to do is pretty much you know, include it in the startup class. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. But there was some reason not to. Uh, yeah, um, I feel like maybe custom. There are some people who are writing custom compares for for the for or validation for the models and properties, and it still mm -hmm. might might be the case because I saw a lot of uh, a couple of, of, of discussions about this uh, uh, around the .NET Core communities, and uh, and still there were some even more efficient uh, zero memory allocated comparisons of various models and, and things like that, and and I I, I think like it's 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 really nice that. It was fucked here, but exactly this is up to implementation, up to decision on if you want to use it, and maybe that's that's also why it wasn't that easy to include this in the core. But that, that was my question, which I wanted to ask: How it can be added to the core to uh, take this responsibility for, from uh, from um, from us as, or, or developers to really uh, be not worried about it? Because still, these methods are. I believe the, the, the models build the way is probably majority, and I hope that it's a majority of the project that is using it that way these days, right? So, yeah, uh, we uh, we never use, I hardly never use current page in our project mm -hmm. because I find I find content model and models builder passing into my actions is a lot easier to test uh, than having to mock uh, the current page object. Uh, so this would be affected to all our projects. I, uh, I'm going to go the, the exact opposite way and say I don't think we're even using render controllers anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I think we we're, we're very rarely nowadays doing root hijacking or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's good. And again, that that just proves that the issue was seen, <laughs> uh, reported, and sorted now. Uh, at least for for for, for these, the, the other issues, and it, that that proves that it, the importance of highlighting this kind of challenges and again drilling them really deeply, like like you did with this kind of analysis of when and how it's happening, uh, is is important. And, and thanks for sharing this one with. All of, all of us basically because it, yeah it, it, it makes Umbraco better now already in the 11th version at least by default and now with this fix uh, in any other versions and yeah can we, we, we should definitely create a, a, a segment <laughs> it will be full of segments every week then but uh, this is amazing thanks Ken for uh, diving also deep in, inside of this code and solving it for us Cool stuff. So link link to the blog post um, uh, with all the links that you've shared. Also, then it will be of course in the in the video description. And yeah, that's that's amazing community uh, collaboration and finding all this stuff there. Yep. Anything else to add, Dennis, from your side? From, from your side? No, that's uh, it. Uh, thanks for uh, the time to to show it, so uh, people be more more people can find it and be aware of. Yeah.
Yeah, well, I, I guess uh, on the flip side, thanks for spending the time to actually prove that this could be replicated <laughs> because so many of these issues, it's easy to just, and I'm guilty of this, I think we all are, raise the issue and then make it someone else's problem. Uh, and, yeah. and you definitely did a lot of work to, to uh, you know, prove it. And equally, people uh, sometimes just get frustrated and make silly workarounds, perhaps, or just accept that that's the way it is. And in this case, mm -hmm. that probably wasn't what happened. You, you were determined that it could work and that it was a bug and it got fixed. So, yeah. yeah I, needed, I needed to prove that it was not our code. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <it's not laughs> <laughs> That's a good motivation as well, you know. Like, yeah. okay, you know that, <laughs> you'd be and, surprised. And as, a side, as a side effect, you got a really so good. Many uh, like, so many developers who like covering their backs or or passing the blame to someone else. You, uh, it's surprising that this doesn't happen a hell of a lot more, isn't it? You're just spending hours and hours. Going, oh, it, it, it's not a bug in my code. Ha! Look, someone else. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I recently fell into the discussion like, you know, should we fix the, 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 pro, the, the vendors or the solutions bugs as a part of our work, right? Because then making this workaround as you've made, uh, as you stated, is some kind of a solution for a bug that we have seen uh, or, or we see during uh, implementing some of the specific tools. And either if it's Umbraco, either if it's some other CMSs or, or tools, uh, they have bugs that software, right? So um, uh, yeah, this this also proves that you know Umbraco took also a good effort to fix it for good, and and, and that this spilled in and won't uh, affect too many people from now on. Right? We we definitely um, need a big effort to fix things when we come up yeah. against them, even if it's in flow source stuff, and we have a lot of. Uh, in some projects, let's say hacks or smart uh, replacements, like if stuff's in DI, you can do some clever things to uh, yeah. to to yeah swap and swap, register, out, register. swap out bits that shouldn't, and then uh, that that then fixes issues or makes it work the way that you need it to, and maybe isn't the default. Like it, we do that a lot, even some dodgy reflection stuff in in a few projects just to make things work. Been there, I been guess there, this issue. Awesome. I guess this issue is, uh, I mean, it, not all, not all, everyone is going to notice it because you know it's it's mainly larger, larger sites, which was the problem for us. We probably have more mm -hmm. Rako Nine sites uh, or ten that don't have this fix and that they haven't been a problem. Uh, so just that this site started to grow and yeah, so uh, it it might be easy to miss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, that, that's exactly why we need to prove uh, and test on the various uh, circumstances because uh, you never know. You might sometimes grow your site to the scale uh, of, of the monster and then start experiencing issues. But if you can predict them or, or, or the software can predict them upfront, that's, that's even more amazing. Uh, but yeah, that's really good. Good, uh, good solution, good um, uh, collaboration and, and more of this to come probably. And we'll be always happy to highlight this kind of work uh, among the community. So yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, the next segment is meetups. And, and, and this is another way of sharing this kind of issues and discussing these issues in the more details for sure. And um, uh, London is, is really close in time. Uh, yeah. But this is the virtual round table that everyone can join probably. Uh, this, and, uh, this is cheeky because Ravi and Lottie don't know that this meetup page exists. I created it before. <laughs> before I'm recording, just to make sure we had something there. But Ravi is all awesome awesome. right. <laughs> a virtual round table on the 13th so uh yeah uh, at least don't trust whatever is on this page but uh yeah there is going to be something happening on, on zoom on that day i guess we'll talk about so it's during um microsoft ignite so i guess we can talk about any announcements from that um any of the the outcomes of the next two weeks of festivals yeah yeah that's a good idea uh so thursday uh, october 10th 13th. Uh, the next is uh, on the 19th, and it's an Edinburgh Umbraco user group. Uh, this one is back in person. We've mentioned it already, and it's, uh, it's still uh, happening. So sign up if it's around uh, uh, your uh, uh, area. And yeah, there is more because uh, definitely to come. We'll be highlighting it, uh, of course, closer to the time, closer to the date. Kent Umbraco Meetup also has a social the day after on October 20th. Uh, and back again, uh, and, and we've been discussing it too. And last but not least from our list of meetups is the 25th of October and Abraco Sweden 
And uh, Dennis, you are planning to go or? Uh, it's a bit far, but Dennis, it's like a bit far. Yeah. Yeah, it's in uh, it's in Stockholm, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in uh, Gothenburg. It's a bit of travel, but maybe. Bit. Yeah. What's that like on a train? Four hours? Five hours? Probably. I think you can take a, a speed train. Uh, it's probably a lot faster, but yeah. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> a very uh, different parts of the country. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lord. It's a long country. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> We know that we know that, but yeah, it's, it's, it depends uh, from the motivation. But it is happening, and, and, and we all know that this is good that this is uh, back and happening also across the globe in various locations. So, yeah, Bjarke will be there talking about the CMS and more. Uh, and yeah, this is the meetups, uh, and a couple of the final reminders and topics. Uh, one is the last chance to submit the talks to Ambraco DK Festival. Uh, so it's uh, the, the call for proposal ends today, right? Come on. Uh, yes, uh, today. I don't know if there's a time. They just said yesterday, it ends yeah. tomorrow. So, yeah, fill it in. Um, or even if yeah. you don't want to talk, if you'd like to attend, fill in yeah. the types of topics you'd like to see. Um, yeah, exactly. And the agenda is being shaped, and it's uh, happening November 24th. So it's uh, it's. A We'll definitely remind and, and mention it multiple times closer to the date too. Um, also, a reminder about the R Umbraco. Uh, <laughs> uh, Callum, you can tell more about the project just to summarize yeah. what we've been hiding. You want to learn more about what the hell this is, go and watch last week's <laughs> Umbraco. Uh, yes. Yeah, we, we're going to take the site down at some point in the next few days. So uh, we've got a few more days to go and enjoy uh, a pirated version of, uh, of our Umbraco. Yeah, that's that's a lot of details. <laughs> and then uh, Lars Eric also wrote a blog post this week about the unit testing the IIS uh, URL or write module mm. uh, with uh, with the, the some of the approaches with the middleware approach and and, and how he approached the, the configuration changes and mocks of uh, that are needed to verify if the the module itself does the job well or maybe not well. Uh, this very is, interesting blog post. I scanned through this briefly, but it's, it yeah. looks like really. This is very, very interesting. interesting. And as Lars says, he's wanted to do this for 20 years. Because, yes. Uh, but uh, only really recently has this become possible with the way that uh, Netcore does its redirect middleware. Um, yeah, so uh, exactly. that's cool. We had, a, we had a really interesting chat uh, at CodeCabin about this exact topic, about redirect yeah. uh, and, and how, how that works in Netcore. And it's a, it's a concept that a few people are, I think, struggling with. Um, which is that effectively, by default, that you can't do redirects in, say, the uh, app application settings, JSON or anything like you could in the web config before. Um, you can plumb in some additional middleware and point it at a, a config file that has effectively, it's like your old web config, it has all of your rewrites in there. Or you can point it at like an HT access file if you're coming from Linux, or you can point it at a, um, uh, yeah, various different formats. So that's cool that, that it now supports that. But I think people are struggling with the fact that in .NET Core, effectively, the application isn't really responsible for that anymore. They're trying to make mm -hmm. redirects the responsible of the web server. So, and, and it's not a distinction you've ever had to make too much before. Like, you have IAS, where you run your application, and you have your application itself. And, th and they're kind of different things. So uh, you expect your web server to do SSL termination and all that sort of thing. It should also be doing a redirect. And, and people have never really bridged those two gaps now. Um, so it's an interesting time. We, we personally aren't using any of those URL rewrites in, in .NET Core because, again, that's being made part of our hosting infrastructure, not part of our... And, and actually, when you start to think about it, the sorts of things you put in those rewrite rules generally are hosting concerns or delivery concerns, rewrite this URL to this, this domain to this domain. Force HTTPS, force www. Like they're not. It doesn't change the behavior of the application. It just changes how it. Yep. Gets yeah, yeah, and it creates a lot of a lot of some issues sometimes in in, in, in running up the solutions locally on various other environments. Uh, uh, generally, uh, switching uh, the hosting also for the for the application and it shouldn't be. It should be independent. But but yep. yeah, I get you. I get your point, and I think uh, there is a lot of legacy approaches being uh, distributed and taken as 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 normal or as a default and that's uh, same as you know we write uh, rules files with you know 
hundreds of thousands of redirect definitions out there or very crazy regex uh, in, uh, uh, rules to, to cover all of the scenarios, creating issues in, in multiple ways. But mm. we have three different types of the redirects now on the on the infrastructure level, application level, and CMS level as well. So it's like uh, it's like that that's well, that's why it's a mixture of all. And I think yeah. it's hard to balance it well, unfortunately. But it's a challenge that mm. we need to face somehow, somehow. Um, cool. Uh, another interesting blog post from this week was about the SSO, um, and it's literally from yesterday. Um, and uh, Nias um, uh, implemented and shared the implementation of the GitHub um, uh, login provider and done with the um, uh, recent opportunities and, and options to implement the OAuth providers in Abaco and .NET Core. And yeah, that proves how easy it can be done. Uh, and I think that uh, it's also a great resource for everyone who will be dealing with any external providers because there is a class, there is a also, uh, yeah, SP.NET Security OAuth. Uh, project that has a lot of providers uh, already ready for us. So uh, yeah, GitHub is one of them. Uh, it might, it must be a really uh, developers focused uh, back office that they are working there with GitHub uh, um, uh, provider, but that's, that's just proof the point and it's really nice to be able to do that, right? Uh, so yeah, blog post and kudos to, 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 for sharing this. And Umbraco HQ was, uh, Having or still is having uh, a community team happy. visit, right? Yeah, the team is loading of people there, and I don't know what they've been doing, but I guess we'll hear a bit more in the coming weeks about what what happened yeah. at the team's visit. Um, yep. But yeah, lots and lots of people. Yeah, exactly. All of the team, community teams uh, gathered now and discussing. So definitely a lot of topics, hopefully, to talk about next, in the next weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, last on our list is uh, another uh, video from Policy, uh, part 14 this week, with previews for block list. Uh, and, uh, so this, this is a really interesting uh, video. He's showing how to set up, I think it was Dave, uh, who did a, in 24 days, an yeah. example of rendering a razor view as the preview for a block list. And so Paul's wired that up, and then he's showing how to create a custom one and debug that custom one all with VS Code, and you end up with a really, really nice looking, uh, you know, version of the site. But uh, yeah, that's 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 what it is. I don't know how many videos now Paul has done on the block list. It must be ten or something in this series. Yeah, yeah we can explore. Them, but definitely, definitely a lot. Yeah. Needs to have. But I, I noticed that there is uh, the whole uh, repository with the Umbraco Ten tutorial on GitHub, uh, and I think that for everyone who prefers the read it form of, uh, of uh, or readable form of, of the materials. This is the best uh, source of the information. And also going through the examples in the code might be sometimes efficient. Uh, but I think generally, there's a plenty of videos in the block list editor. So uh, I, I'm sure uh, a lot of people will master uh, using block list editor, editor uh, thanks to these videos and thanks to Paul uh, sharing knowledge. So yeah, as usual. And Paul replied to himself that there's a six videos on the block list. No need to check. And thanks, Paul. It's going to become like an Umbraco trivia question, isn't it? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. How many, how many block list videos do Paul take to? These videos Paul make is great. I mean, I always, when everyone, someone comes to me and they're new to Umbraco, I always point them to Paul's videos. It's uh, really great material. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. And that's all for this week. Uh, it, it was really a uh, packed uh, uh, set of information. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, and the links to the materials will be, of course, in our video. Uh, thanks, Dennis, for joining us uh, and, and, and sharing your way to finding the solution and, 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 and journey with Ambraco. Uh, uh, we expect uh, you to still keep us uh, busy and, uh, and, 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 and uh, posting a lot of interesting Ambraco findings, even from your side project and your exploration. Uh, and yeah, that's all for today. Anything to add? No. no. Next week is going to be interesting for Umbra Coffee. Tune in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. See you. Have a great week. week. Have a great weekend. Yes. yes. Have a great weekend, everyone. And see you next week as usual. Cheers, everyone. Bye bye. 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 Cheers.